and welcome to weekly World Climate Change News. This is Han Zhang. Nigeria has been experiencing the worst flood in a decade. Earlier this month, Nigeria's National Emergency Management Agency warned of catastrophic flooding for states located along the courses of Niger and Banwe rivers. The release of excess water from a dam in neighboring Cameroon had contributed to the flooding. In Nigeria, hydropower generation dominates the functions of many large dams. Nigeria needs to create structures along the river Banwe and its tributaries that will be served primarily for flood control and secondarily for hydroelectric power. Given the lack of resources, it would be difficult to build dams only for the flood control. A petition signed by multiple environmental organizations demands Coca-Cola, among other corporations, to be removed as a sponsor from the UN Climate Summit COP27. The world's largest plastic polluter should not be able to greenwash their way out of the plastic pollution crisis. Reports show that Coca-Cola emits the same amount of carbon dioxide as more than 1.1 million U.S. cars. In 2019, the company produced 3 million metric tons of plastic, earning the title the world's top plastic polluter for four years in a row. Environmental organizations are worried that companies like Coca-Cola might influence the outcome of COP27. A recent UNICEF report warns that more than 2 billion children could be negatively impacted by more frequent, longer-lasting, and more severe heat waves by the year 2050. Today, the current number of at-risk children stands at half a billion, indicating a substantial increase over the next three decades. Unless the global community takes crucial steps to mitigate the long-term impacts of climate change, children are especially vulnerable to the effect of heat waves because unlike adults, they are less able to regulate and control their body temperatures during such events. While the potential impact of these anticipated heat waves is far-reaching in scope, the health risks include greater chance for both chronic respiratory issues and cardiovascular disease. UNICEF maintains that the world urgently needs to invest in building their resilience and in adapting all the systems children rely on to meet the challenges of a rapid changing climate. Partners from World Health Organization, the UN Children's Agency, UN Chef, and the World Bank state that the government must invest more in building clean and safe drinking water infrastructure to mitigate the effect of climate change. Droughts and floods affect water security and supply, leaving millions of young children without access to clean drinking water system. The report examines the connections between water, health, and development. Access to reliable, safe drinking water is fundamental to ensure future generations to healthy, educated, and thriving. The nationally determined contributions pledged by countries to arrest climate change are insufficient. Noted a report of the United Nations Framework Conventions on Climate Change. The report claimed that the cumulative carbon dioxide emissions in 2020 to 2030, based on the latest indices, would likely use up 86% of the remaining carbon budget. At the current pace, 
86% of the carbon budget for the 1.5 Celsius threshold, a warming could be depleted by 2030. According to the updated NDC, India now stands committed to reducing emissions intensity of its GDP by 45% by 2030 from its 2005 levels. Climate change has impacted the frequency and ferociousness of cyclones in the Indian subcontinent like elsewhere in the world. The characters of the cyclones have now changed, making them more damaging than earlier. Currently, cyclones affect 11 of India's 36 states and union territories. Cyclones accounted for 48% of India's overall human life loss due to climate-related disasters. Due to increases in sea surface temperature and ocean heat content, intensity of cyclones is increasing along Indian coasts. Since the middle of the 20th century, the frequency of the severe cyclonic storms during the post-monsoon seasons has increased significantly. Last year, the U.S. generated about 309 pounds of plastic per person. Although, companies and industries are boasting on recyclable products and recycling efforts. Greenpeace found that recycling is now down to about 5%. In the U.S., recycling reached a high of 9.5% in 2014 and is down from 8.7% in 2018. But much of the waste counted as recycled at that time was exported to China for incineration or dumping. Also, based on the figure from the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, around 80% of the all plastics ever produced have not been properly recycled. And global plastic use and waste are projected to near triple by 2060. With plastic pollution doubling, it is suggested to switch to system of reuse and refill instead of recycling.